OMG. I'm about to straighten my hair. I know, surprising. For the first time in over 12 years. But if you know me and you know what I'm about, you know I'm not about to sit here and just straighten my hair without being cautious of damage. Especially now that I have lightened my hair. Definitely do not want to go through the curl recovery again. I've been there, I've done that. I've succeeded at recovering my hair and I've learned my lesson. I'm gonna to try to do this in the healthiest way possible while providing a good option you might want to consider. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you walk. Let's get into it. With complete confidence and honesty, I can say that I have never, not once, not even for a split second, not ever, felt the need or desire to see my hair straightened in these past 12 years. Because losing my hair once was enough for me to just like, that's it, I appreciate my curls and these curls aren't going nowhere. So I haven't straightened my hair, not even once in these past 12 years. The last time I straightened my hair, myself was around 2000, end of 2010, I believe. And I remember while going through my recovery, I had an opportunity for a video shoot that I was being the model for. And in this video shoot, it required for me to have my hair straightened because they were turning me into Beyonce for this video. And this was like early 2011, I wanna say. In New York, at a hotel, awesome team of hairstylists came in and did their thing and they straightened my hair for that one day. And I remember it being a bittersweet moment for me because I did not wanna straighten my hair anymore. But thankfully, the stylist that was doing my hair was a diva trained stylist. He like, you know what? We're, we're gonna do this minimally. We're gonna make you look like Beyonce. Um, but we're not going to cause damage here, okay? So he did the best he could. I just didn't want my hair straightened anymore and I was like done with that. Yeah, anyway, I know it's not uncommon for people who have already transitioned and are already appreciating their healthy curls to straighten their hair once or twice or three times by now, especially it being 12 years later. But I'm not one of those people. I went hard. I was like, nope, I'm done with straightening my hair. So it was easy for me, it wasn't a struggle. But now I completely understand more than ever why a lot of people do feel the need once in a while to straighten their hair, stretch out their curls, and just let your straight hair rock for a while. And the fact is that curly hair is high maintenance. We all know that. Anybody with curly hair knows that. And straightening my hair from time to time could give me that much needed break. While at the time, also giving me some benefits, which I just neglected to consider before because I was so anti straightening my hair. But now I can admit some of the beneficial experiences that I've had with having my hair straightened. But I also do not want to sacrifice the integrity of my curls over having straightened hair because that's where most of us went wrong, right? When we damaged our curls back in the day, it's because we didn't value our curls as much as we valued having the straight hair, which is why when we prioritize having straight hair like I did, you don't really learn how to care for your curls or how to style it because most of your time is going into making your hair look good while it straightens versus making your hair look good while it's curly. But here is where my perspective recently changed because having had healthy and naturally curly hair for the past 12 years that I've embraced and only learned more and more about, I can now accept the benefits in stretching my curls and straightening my curls once in a while. And there's a difference between stretching your curls and straightening your curls. You can definitely stretch your curls in a healthy way that doesn't involve heat whatsoever or at least low heat, and there's not a lot of ways that you can straighten your hair without heat. But there's still benefits in both if we do them right. And what I can now today admit, looking back at my experience with straightening and stretching my hair, is that when my hair was straightened back in the day, my hair grew longer. And I believe that it's because while the hair is straightened for a week or two at a time, oil that we naturally produce from our scalp is more easily traveling down to our ends. Because since our hair isn't in a spiral or curly, those oils can easily travel down versus when our hair is curly, the oils from our scalp rarely ever get to our ends. And while our hair is straightened, it kind of reduces tangles by like 90% because the hair is straightened. And I actually know several curly haired people who don't always style their hair curly. They kind of leave their hair in a stretch state. They would wash their hair, um, moisturize their hair, then put their hair in a tight bun or do like a twist out and then put it in a bun so we can stretch the hair. And then they could kind of leave their hair styled in a stretched state for a week or two at a time. And a lot of these people claim that it has helped their hair retain moisture, be more manageable, experience less breakage, and grow longer. My mom is the one who used to straighten my hair most of the time for me when I was younger. And I wanna note that when she did that, she straightened my hair with the traditional 
Dominican way, which is basically no iron. My mom is very anti-iron. And when I was a teen, I didn't get it. I did not understand her because it was like, hey, this is what everybody's doing. They're straightening hair with irons and it's so much easier, so much faster. Your hair gets flatter. My mom would stick with her roller set, sit under the dryer for about an hour. And then after I would get out of the hair dryer after an hour, she would only blow dry the edges of my hair and the back part over here to straighten those areas. That's how my mom always did my hair until I started doing it myself, going to the salons. They would blow dry my hair with really high heat and that amount of high heat was very damaging to my hair for sure. When my mom was doing it, my hair looked amazing. It did not look damaged. It looked really healthy and she really knew what she was doing. I just didn't know it at the time. So today I will be using the Rev Air hair drying and stretching system. This thing is huge. It is new to me. I have been trying to get this for a while now. And whenever I would try to buy it, it was sold out. Little did I know the company was already trying to contact me for a while. Had my manager contact them. That's how I found out that they've been trying to contact me. And I just wanted to know, hey, how can I buy this? Because it's been sold out for so long. And they were like, hey, we've been trying to send you one for you to try out for yourself for a while. So let's just send you one. They sent me their whole system and I am so grateful. I'm not being paid to do this video. And they don't even know that I'm doing this video. So they're not sponsoring me in any way. They just gifted me this set. Because my plan all along was to bring you guys along the journey of this experience with stretching my, my hair in a healthier way. Initially, I was gonna do this video uh, by giving you guys like a first impressions, but then I'm so glad that I didn't do that because I did try out the Rev Air system one time on myself and one time on my daughter already. And I'm so glad that I did that because now having experienced the first results, I can now better advise based on my experience already and do things that I think will work versus the first time I had no idea how it was gonna turn out. So now I'm more intentional with it and I'm expecting better results than the first time. So let's get to it. Wash my hair today with my Hair Story new wash which is my favorite way to cleanse my hair in case you didn't know. Before I start, I'm going to protect my hair with the Aveda Nutri Plenish. This is a lightweight leave-in conditioner that will protect your hair from heat. Even though we're using very low heat today, I'm still gonna use it to protect my hair because better safe than sorry. And I'm going to mostly focus it on my ends. And I'm also going to take a little bit of my Reverie I think that's how you pronounce it, or Reverie. This is Milk. This is their most popular product. This is by Garrett Markinson. But anyway, I love this product and I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Again, mostly on the ends, which is very, very important because when I used this on my daughter and myself, the biggest problem that I see with this process, with this system is the ends. It does not smooth out the ends very well. Surprisingly, the roots come out amazing, but the ends stay a little bit puffy. So I have some tricks for that later on that I'm gonna show you guys. So no matter what health condition your hair is in, do not expect this to be something that's going to sleek your hair as well as a blow dry your hair as well as an iron. It's not made for that. It's not what it's supposed to do. It's just supposed to stretch your hair and dry it with air in very low heat. I'm using their comb that came with the system just to make sure that the products are distributed through my hair. Sure, your hair is detangled. This also came with a water sprayer, which is huge, which I love. But this thing is so that you can hold it here on your table as, you know, in between drying. What this reminds me of is basically the first of something, like the first computer, the first vacuum, the first hair dryer, the first TV versus the TVs now. It's always bulky. It never starts off sleek. That's what this is. I have a very big feeling that we're gonna be seeing these vacuum reverse hair dryers still here in the future, but just more in a sleeker way. To get started, you're gonna need some clips because we're gonna clip our hair in sections before we start drying. So I'm gonna section off the top. And from what the company told me and in their manual as well that comes with the system, it says that sectioning is very important, but also there's some things you should know. The main two things is do not apply oil in your hair before using the system. Oil should be a finisher for after you're done, but using oil on your hair and then using this can damage the machine. So please read the manual before you use it. Another one is to not pump your hair like this as you're drying. You're just supposed to bring your hair to the top and hold it there for 30 to 90 seconds, depending on your hair type. I have curly hair type, so I'm gonna do it for 90 seconds. And before you turn the system on right here, look at the levels. You can do it on different levels. The lowest level is obviously less heat and the highest level is the highest heat possible. But let me tell you, I have used it on the highest heat possible, which is level seven. And it is still not high heat to the point of like a blow dryer. The type of high heat that this has is not in comparison to a hair dryer. So even when you go high on this, 
I still think it'll be much less damaged than using a blow dryer on your hair or, or any straightener. So if your hair is already straight and you just wanna dry it, you might just wanna start on level one or level two. You have wavy hair, you can do like level three, level four. If you have curly hair, you can do anywhere from level four to level five or six. You don't have to go to level seven, depending on the hair type or if you want to. It's very important for these sections to not be too large because if the section is too large, it's not gonna dry the best. And you're just gonna have to keep drying sections over and over. So it's better to take like medium, small sections like this. And here's my own tip from my own experience. Using a wide tooth comb like this, I don't think it's the best method because the wide tooth comb kind of leaves certain spaces open that don't really detangle each strand of hair. And I find that using a wet brush or something like this to detangle your hair is a more accurate and more smooth detangle. No like little tiny knots will be in there. Today, I'm gonna start off with level five, show you how that looks, and then I'll probably move up to level six and then stay at level six. So here we go. And on the actual wand, you have low and high. So if you bring it to low, this is gonna be a low pressure and high will be the highest pressure that it'll suck your hair through like a vacuum. <laughs> section I just want to show you guys this as I said the roots are pretty good and straight my issue with it is more the ends and it, the same thing happened with my daughter my daughter has a very healthy long hair but as the days went by it went looked better and better as the ends kind of got moisturized and tucked away through the night it just straightened a little bit more I held it in for about 90 seconds that's a minute and 30 and I find that to be enough for my hair you could do a little more if you want because again I'm not doing this to keep my hair styled straight I'm going to be doing another style to show you some tips and tricks on how to make this puffy-ish look work for you, you know? bottom section done so far halfway through so far I can say this is so much easier than straightening your hair the traditional way with blow dryers except you don't get the exact sleekness here's a close-up of my ends and I think this is a really good method for kids because there is no pain involved my daughter never complained again it's not high heat I can tell this already looks better than the first time I did it I'm trying not to let the wet hair touch the back being very careful that's why my head is all to the front Again, always brush it through. section too. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then show you the results. All right, this is what we got. These are the end results. It is stretched. It is pretty much straightened, just not in a sleek way, which is okay. And the first thing I'm gonna do right now is apply my Hair Story Hair Oil. I'm gonna take a good amount of this and focus it on the ends so that while my hair is wrapped up at night with this oil, it can smoothen out a little bit more. Okay, pros and cons. This is gonna be the pro side, this is gonna be the con side. Pro, this method is less damaging, less heat equals less damage. Con side, less heat, but not very sleek results. Another pro is that it's simple to use. You don't have to have any like specific training as opposed to when you're blow drying your hair. You kind of need to know how to blow dry your hair. And the con is that it's sometimes not as simple as just putting your hair in. There's a couple of steps, like your hair has to be detangled. And I find that you have to brush your hair in between and you have to do it two times in order to get like the best results. So I used a round brush that is made for 
uh, blow drying your hair, which is a tip that I got from Natural85. When she was doing her daughter's hair, she used a round brush in between going back in with 20 seconds with the Revere after brushing it. So you would dry your hair first, brush it, and then use the Revere again for another like 20, 30 seconds to ensure just a little bit more sleekness and straightness. Another con would be that this system is so big and bulky. Um, it's a little bit expensive. But here's a pro, if you truly care about not damaging your hair and you want something safe that you can create a style, you find yourself needing this method often or wanting a method like this often, then it's worth the investment. Another pro is that this is a great way to prep your hair for a style. So if you're someone who's already using heat and you're okay with using heat sometimes, you could use this method in order to eliminate one portion of heat, if you know what I mean. So for example, if you blow dry your hair and use an iron, then you might want to stop blow drying your hair and instead use this first and then iron your hair so that you can get that sleekness. This way you're eliminating at least one form of heat instead of using double heat, you know what I mean? Or the opposite, you don't flat iron, you use the Revere and then you blow dry. And then maybe that works out better for you because either way you're reducing heat. Or you could be like me, only use the Rev Air because you don't want to blow dry or use irons or cause more damage. And then use this little bit of a puffy result to create a certain style that you can prep today so that tomorrow it looks good, which is what I'm about to do right now. Okay, so to prep my hair overnight, something that my mom does a lot on her own hair and it looks amazing. She'll do her roller set and she'll go under the hair dryer for about an hour and then she won't blow dry. What she'll do is kind of like sleek her hair up into a bun all the way here at the top as it's brushed and then wrap it into a bun a little bit tight but not too tight where it's like annoying to sleep in. And then she'll put a head scarf, go to bed and the next day she'll have like these smooth natural looking waves to her blow dried hair, even though it wasn't blow dried. So it's like a more natural, less heat inducive way. I tried that method last time and it did not work out the best for me. So today I'm gonna try a new method on my own. I think it'll look really cute if I were to leave it like this. My anniversary is on Monday. I am going to take a little bit of gel. I know, you weren't expecting that. It says strong hold, but it's really not that strong of a hold. I've used it in curly hair routines before. I didn't like it too much in curly hair routines, so I'm gonna try it with this straight ends look. Take the hair in two braids, braid it with a little bit of gel, go to bed, and then maybe you'll have like this wavy look tomorrow. So we're gonna go for the braid. I'm gonna take my comb and just split it as evenly as I can. I'm gonna work on this section first. I hope this doesn't mess up the look. Gel in my hands lightly over here and I'm gonna focus most of it over here in the bottom. The reason why this is scary is because the gel is a little bit wet. I don't want my hair to curl up, but we're gonna quickly create this braid. And I'm taking small elastic ties for the ends. That is a pretty tight braid. Let's do the other one. want to take it up a notch before bed go ahead and take a satin scarf like this and you can wrap it up like this and go to bed and it still looks kind of cute but if you know me I am not a head wrapping person you have never seen me promote bonnets and wrapping your hair at night it's just not my thing I have my satin pillowcases and that's okay for me I don't think I look attractive with this on and I don't like the idea of only looking attractive for others outdoors and then at home I look like an old lady going to bed next to this hot man, you know? Obviously it's okay once in a while, but I just don't wanna get into the habit of doing that or wearing wraps in my head. But anyway, I'm gonna go have dinner like this and then later on I will be going to bed like this and tomorrow I will show you the official results. We'll see, let's hope for the best. And here we are on day two. I slept with my hair this way and today I'm gonna take it out and see how it looks. Something I did this morning before doing my makeup and everything is spray a little bit of this Innersense I Create Finish. This is just a finishing hairspray that usually provides a shine and hold for me. If you want a stronger hold hairspray than that, then there's other ones like this one from Bounce Curl. I actually slept without this because I had it on for like, I don't know, like 15 minutes and it just came right off. So I was just like, whatever. And I do have a satin pillowcase. So I woke up with my hair pretty fine. Um, it wasn't messy or anything like that. It was. All right, I just put this on this morning for a couple of hours, like while I did breakfast and got ready and things like that. And I feel like that time of having it on in the morning was enough to kind of allow my hair to set and have less 
flyaways and frizz and like lay down certain edges, you know? As you can see, it looks pretty good. Enough blabbing, let me just take off these braids and see what we're dealing with. Okay, I can already see that maybe I did them too tight and maybe making them a little bit looser would have helped. The braid kind of like gives your hair that crimp look, but I wanted to do it tight so that my hair is more protected and creates a certain form. And this isn't so bad. Probably will not do the braids so tightly next time. I did them tightly on purpose, as you saw. I felt like it would secure the hair a little bit better. But also knowing my hair, I think that the severeness of the crimp, I have fine hair, so it's gonna go away pretty quickly. It's just the difference right here that, that gets me. But this is still a really good method. I really enjoyed doing this. And it's a nice change, and I can see myself having my hair like this for a week. I'm a little stunned with looking at myself uh, in this LCD screen I have over here. So I think I'll keep my hair like this for a little while and I will probably experiment with putting it in a low bun. Not twist it too much, but stretch it like this and just do the bun and I think that'll naturally stretch out some of the crimps. Either way, this does not look back to me. I don't know what you think. <laughs> Let me know down below what you think. Would you try this method? Do you think it's worth it? I think it is. Have a different style, a style that is doable that you can do at home and that it's easy and won't cause any inconvenience to your curls. Before I leave, I want to remind you to subscribe to my channel right next to my name. Below this video, you should see a subscribe button. Just click that. That'll definitely help me out a lot. All right, I've been talking long enough. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, sunshines.